have, but since I haven't collected it yet, um, I just wanted to run through it again. We did not collect 225 yet, right? No, I only collected up to 224. So I think we already checked this, but I just figured I would, you know, cover all bases and double check it. Um, anybody ill, like playing from home, uh, today's homework, same as yesterday, chapter two closure. Uh, tomorrow, if you're sick today and you end up back, this is what's expected. Um, but you would have extra time because you're sick. So. You didn't have um, and they don't need to. Essentially, if you're ever, like, all of us, myself included, we'll probably end up sick at some point this winter. If you choose, I don't, it's not an expectation, but if you choose to get on YouTube and, like, watch the video, you don't miss anything. Right? Like, from our class, because we record 1A. 3B is sometimes a little different, but we cover the same stuff. So, real quick, let's check 225 so we can get on to some other stuff, because I think we already checked it. Can I comment on your YouTube video? Are you this? That was annoying. <laughs> I don't like that noise in real life, and I don't like checking my email, because it's like, ding, comment. It's like, oh, okay. Oh, that was a waste of time. Okay. I have 10 minutes of my life on it. Oh, you're so right. We just had a gas leak. That kind of distracted me. Actually, no, I did take it before we walked outside. Yeah. All right, because I thought to myself, I don't know when we're coming back inside, and I eat a donut. Thanks to Mr. Kabila, because he's like, I won't be here. Here's donuts. All right, any questions? 225. 225. Going once. Going twice. Sold. Sold. 226. Who? What? Do you want to go back? You sure? Was it like an off-topic question and that's why you don't want to go back? Kind of what? Rhetorical. While we're checking answers, I mean, you can ask a rhetorical question while people check answers. Well, rhetorical wouldn't have an answer. Okay. Then ask it. Why won't you ask it? Unless a problem tells you you must write it as a mix, that's okay. However, you gotta reduce it. So improper fractions are fine, but if it's able to be reduced, reduce it because we want to make things easy, right? Smaller numbers easier to work with. So like. C could be 25 fourths, and that can't be reduced because 25 and 4 don't have any common factors. Right? B could be 25 thirds, also can't be reduced because 25 and 3 don't share any common factors. And then D is 25 eighths, same story, no common factors. All right, moving on down, 102, 103, can you get your check on those? Uh, a few people came up and asked me about 102. It is just making you think through the split up of a fraction multiplication function. If you don't know how to do five sixths, you can just do a sixth and then multiply that by five. So one sixth of a value is just divide by six. Right? So that's how they get the four. They do 24 divided by six. And then they multiply that by five and get 20. 103 through 105. Please check those. Your graph may look a tiny bit different, but there was no reason to not just go by ones. What do you mean what? Who's what? In? What did 105 ask us to do? Oh, I put the graph on there for you. Sorry. I, I'm being nice this year. Look, I forget. Sorry. I forget. Yeah, I didn't do this last year. Two, 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 three, one. As long as there's no questions back on two, two, six. Oh. Araya? Um, I have a principle on uh, one sixteen. One sixteen. Well, we haven't even checked that yet. We're not there yet, is what I'm saying. Just hang on to it. So here we go. Check one fifteen, then we'll get to one sixteen. But Araya, which part of it is your question? Is it B? Tough. So any any problem with CPM that has like A, B, C, whatever, like they get harder. 
as they go. They're not just like randomly in there. The last one's going to be the hardest. It's going to be a challenge. So the C uses bigger numbers, and it's kind of encouraging you to think through that whole like application of bigger numbers. What I would have done, because 234 is kind of hard to factor, unless you just take a calculator and you use 234 divided by 2, 234 divided by 3, and you just like write out all the factor pairs. Excuse me. Write out what adds up to 31. Right? Because you know they're both going to be positive. So I would take 30 and 1, 29 and 2, although you know those are kind of like not big enough. So go towards the middle of what makes 31. So my strategy for you with a problem like B, which um, especially because a lot of people struggle with it, hint, hint, nudge, nudge, it'll probably be on the mastery, like one like this with a bigger value, is think through as close to the middle as possible. So 31, okay, 15 and 16, right? So 15 and 16 would make 31. So think through what is the multiplication there of 15 times 16, and then go from there. So if I try this, and it doesn't work, reduce this by 1, go up by 1, because that'll still make 31. If that doesn't work, reduce by 1, go up by 1, and there we are. Other questions? So magic diamond problems, when you have the top and bottom, the sum and the product, I would work with the sum pieces and look for what do they produce. It's just, if I get myself trained to actually do that, I won't lose the pens as much as I used to. <laughs> look, let's be realistic. Now the funny thing is, and I'm sure you'll see this happen, when the pen doesn't go vertical and it goes sideways, it rolls because the magnet isn't strong enough and then it swings off, like jumps off the board. Yes, <laughs> Alright, any questions on the other diamonds? If you're going to multiply to make zero, one of them has to be zero, we know that. The pen? I think the stapler's name is Fernando. Uh, when Big B broke my stapler last year, the one with the eyeballs, I think his name is Fernando. I think. I don't remember my name. But... Not Nick. The stapler. Alright, 117, 118. Refocus. Refocus, Sam. I have a name for your pen. Felipe. Felipe? Yeah. Did you go? Did you get an alien from Area 15? Yeah. Hey, refocus. Any questions on 117, 118? Any questions, 117, 118? Adding those mixed numbers is a little funky, so please be careful with that. You want to make them improper. You want to make them common denominator. And then add them. Or, with just addition. So like A and B, here's something I wanted to review because I was working with somebody and they're like, oh wait, you can do that? A has 7 and a partial, 2 and a partial, right? With addition, guys, make it easier. Can I put 7 with 2? Yeah. I can't put 5 eighths with 9 sixteenths right now, but I don't have to make it improper. Put 7 with 2, put the 9 out in your answer space. Then put the fractions together. 10 sixteenths, 9 sixteenths, and you'll get 19 sixteenths. You just gotta pull one of those sixteens out, and that's how you get 10 and 3 sixteenths. The only danger with things like that is here, you don't wanna do that sort of technique, because if you take the 6 away from the 8, then, well, I mean, you could, then you still would have to take the 2 fifths away from the 2 that you now have left over, it's a bit more, you know, kind of complicated there. I would still do improper's for the subtraction. But here, add up the pieces that you have as they go together easily. Right? Put the 2 with the 6. Get 8. Then deal with the partials, adding those together. Is anyone totally not understanding what I'm saying? Or if you want me to show it, please be bold and tell me if that doesn't make sense. It's sort of like like terms. 
The integers can go with the integers. The partials can go with the partials. I want 18. I didn't want that window to disappear. 118. Probability is best phrased as a fraction and then is reducible. Now, the nice thing about card deck problems, well, actually, if you've played many card deck games, um, you are probably familiar that the deck is broken into four suits. Each suit is broken into four cards. So, or sorry, like 13 cards. My brain got ahead of myself. So each type of card, like a four, has four of them, right? One of each suit. So now B is a little weird. This is, as we've talked about a couple times this year, this is the complement situation. What's probably she will not draw a club? Well, everything but clubs. How many suits are not clubs? Well, three out of the four. You don't even have to think through 39, 50 seconds. Or 50, yeah, 50 seconds. Is that how you say that? It's just three fourths, right? The deck is four suits. One of them is clubs. All the rest are not. Questions on that? 119. I keep getting a lot of questions on mean and median. Please make sure that we are comfortable with mean being the average and median being the middle. I will not answer that question when we go to take the mastery, and quite frankly, I won't be here Monday when we start the mastery. So we're taking the mastery Monday and Tuesday. Did I talk to the class about that? I'm taking the day off because friends are in town. I can't go to their wedding. Yeah. Yeah, I need to make sure that, you know, she's going to treat them right. So this works out all right. Closure, you can check obviously in your book, your ebook, and we will check. Uh, we'll check two, three, two. Goodbye, sing pretty. Make sure you drink water seriously, because you have a concert tonight. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Drink water, drink water, and when you're done with that, drink more water. Was this already two, three, two? Am I crazy? Two, three, one. No, I'm not kidding. All right, two, three, two. Two, three, two, and then we'll just go over the closure from yesterday. Sorry, this is not answered. You're welcome. Your graph from two, three, two. Did I hold you for a moment? You did. Oh. Yeah. Man, I'm getting way too easy. Well, you, I, I worry, like, you got to be able to make the x, y, axis, you got to be able to scale them, and, like, I did that for you here. Um, you wouldn't have to go by one, right? And there is a gap on the graph. So they went by twos on the y axis, just to compress your points down a little bit. So if the graph wasn't provided for you, that scale choice is yours. One twenty five. So when we looked at these, if you did not notice it, yeah, go ahead and talk about it. Okay, so um, for A, the energies are even. Like, it's on the So, well, Lily's saying it's talking about the Y, right? It goes 1, 2, then 4, then 8. These gaps are not equidistant. That, the graphs can't work like this. At least accurate graphs can't work like this. Um, as we get into the political season, watch for um, commercials that use broken graphs or inappropriately made graphs because their graph doesn't have to be accurate. They just have to have like stuff at the bottom saying like da 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 da. This graph is not accurate. Like, you know what I mean? So this would be a trick that somebody might do to make things look like they go up, nice and even. What's wrong with this graph, Molly? Oh, go ahead. Uh, so presidential elections are every four years. So, uh, so, elections are every four years, so you know they're going to fall on even years. But every year 
there are elections for the open new seats. So whatever seats, quote unquote, which really they are seats, like it's where people sit. Um, whatever seats are open, whoever stepped down, retired, or hit their term limits, they go up for um, for whatever. So um, this like this fall starts kind of the big campaigning season towards um, the next bigger election. Every even year is a bigger election year, whether it's presidential or not. Um, so there's actually a giant Democratic debate at Audubon, where I went to play college at. So they're going to shut down the whole campus because all these presidential candidates are going to come in. While we're talking about graphs like this, I wanted to show you guys something super cool. Last night at the PTSA meeting, and yes, I'm that awkward person who's like, wait, what, what's your plan with that graph? Can I have it? So this is a printout of our direct drive. These dates, September 6th, 8th, 10th, 12th, 15th, ooh, little jump there, three days instead of two days, but two days, two days, three days, two days, two days, right? Almost evenly spaced out on the X. Look at how consistent the money we raised went. There was like, no week that was like dramatically high of a jump and no week that was like flat, right? Even the closest to flat couple days, we made money. So guys, this is how we went from, please help us, we're poor, to $15,000, right? This is sweet, but I just thought the graph was really cool because it's almost a perfectly straight line. If we line a best fit this, like it's close. Right, look at how close those points line up. And we could probably even do it a little bit better. Wait, can we beat our goal? Uh, no, we were at like 94% of it, I think. Now think about if the people who didn't participate, this is always what I like to say with math. So we got donations through 98 of our 180 accounts that were set up, right? Like, so each student had an account, and then um, I think people could donate to teacher accounts or whatever too. But think about if those. Um, like 80 people, right, essentially, that didn't participate, if all of them threw in $10. Maybe $800 more than what we made. And we would have almost been at the goal. Then. We're $1,000 short. Our goal was 16800 16800 That was based off each person raising a certain amount. I forget what amount they gave each person. 100 No, that'd be 18000 It wasn't even 100 It was a little less than that. Unless it was, oh, they did their math based off the 168 students. Yeah, you are right. They did, but I don't know how there's 180. Ah, this is math in action. There are 12 core teachers or like advisory teachers. 168 plus 12 is what? 180. That's where that 180 came from. 12 teachers, 168 total. All right, questions about the graph or about actual homework? No, no, no. Okay, good, because I want to get back to the actual homework. Now wait, I forget if I breathe early. Molly, did I actually take your question slash answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure. Oh yeah, I sorry, I geeked out about the graph for a second and I like blacked out. So the zero has to be in the like the corner which is called zero. Ah thank you. You might be asked to write about this. <coughs> the origin is always where the what meets. The yeah, the x and the y axes. And sometimes a z axis. Right? If we get into three dimensional graphing. So guys, picture the wall as your x, y axis. Take a line coming out of the wall towards you. That's your z axis. Right? So if you get into 3D graphing. Yeah, that's what's wrong with this graph. Now the scale's right. Right? It goes by ones, goes by ones. But the zeros need to be in the origin. At this point, Molly, what's up? You're going to turn in everything 2.2.5 up through closure because I haven't seen any of those. So I'll write it all out for you guys, but we got 20 minutes, so no worries. All right, moving on. This is what I kept talking about in math, or in math, in class. What's convenient? What's easy? Right? Like, excuse me, so this doesn't come out nicely, but if we round it, we can round to seven. And we always want to try to round up, because that will give us extra space, as opposed to if we round down, we won't have enough graph. Made those super cool. 
Maybe it has like a super cool geometric sketch. Or something. Well, and if, if you've already like done the homework and you're confident in your answers or you checked homework help or whatever, like I know some of you guys sketch while we're doing this stuff. I'm okay with that as long as you're on task when we need to be on task. 27, 28, any questions? We're almost there. We're almost there. Okay. I'm expecting everyone who looks bored or unengaged that you're just done with homework, this was easy enough, and you're ready for the math school. Which I'm not saying that is a bad thing. Like, if I was you and I had already done all my work and checked my homework, I'd be like, please don't do that. Who's ready for Friday and off? Like, not tomorrow Friday, but next year I like it. All right, so then closure. I forget why I dropped these little digits. It's somewhere. These answers, as we said, were in your ebook slash book. You could have checked, but problem one thirty. Please make sure you have that repetend. There. Now, B, I was helping some people with. An easy way to think through B is 7 eighths is 1 minus an eighth. So an eighth is 0.125, or like 125 thousandths. Take that away from a thousand. Lily, do you have a question? Yeah. Yes, but it can be reduced. That's why they reduced it. So C would be 204 over 1,000, but then it's reducible. Yeah, 204 thousandths, B properly said is 4,700. For A, please realize that was because it was over a 9, right? Please try to bring that rule back up in your head. I'm going to pull up the closure again so you guys can look at the problems as we do this. Don't worry, I always have like 18 tabs. It's okay, we will survive. So 13 ninths, right? Make that mixed, and it's 1 and 4 ninths. 4 over 9 just repeats the 4. Now my concern is a few people tried to apply a different rule. What would it be if the fraction that we had because this isn't just um, check stuff day. This is like make sure we're ready for the review game slash test. So four ninths we know is 0 0.4 repeating. But what's that other rule with repeating that involves the 11 denominator? So that you don't remember you should write down somewhere just like to, because every time you write something down it helps put it in your brain. Nobody can remember what happened to you. What if I make it worth like a prize to just go out and look for it? Yeah, we do it. We do something with the numerator, Nikki. Um, I remember. Because we want to get this as close to 100 as possible. Toby? I think you multiply by 9. And this, if you're over 9s, that's what repeats. So two nines will repeat two numbers when we look for the decimal version of something with an 11 denominator. We just multiply the numerator by nine. And if you can't remember that, just remember getting two nines on bottom. Like if we can get to a however many nines on bottom, whatever on top, the same amount of digits repeats, right? Two nines, two repeating digits. Questions on that? I switched. I couldn't tell if that hand was about to go or not. One thirty-one. There's a lot of different ways you can do this, so just double check your math. You don't really need to compare to the T. One thirty-two. We had some good questions on that. Of like, where did they start? 
Well, it doesn't really matter where they started. They could start at 12, and now they land at 18, but still, how do I get back to where I started is what they're asking. How do we return to the start? 133. We're just kind of writing out what they gave us. Hmm? Kind of, and, and any questions? And I was just going to give you guys a little bit more time to finish stuff up for staple and turn it all in. Like, I would rather have your work today so I know who's good. And then tomorrow, probably morning, I will just like bug people that haven't turned it in. Hey, are you ready? Or when you come to class, you're just going to have that time. To, it's not like a punishment, but it's like you're not ready to play the game if you haven't done your practice. Right? you got to practice before you can play the game. Uh, four fifteenths. Uh, do not feel like every problem like this is four fifteenths. I feel like we had that same answer on a mastery, pretty sure, and we've seen it like on a homework before. Um, we will start to change the fractions so that they're harder to work with. They're just trying to get you comfortable with making common denominators. Right, so three and five are nice to make common denominators. 135, you didn't have to use it, and I gave it to you on the sheet, right? But if we wanted to show two thirds of this, we'll split thirds vertically. Shade two of them, we end up with two sixths double shaded. Remember, you're looking for what's double shaded. One thirty six more probability. It is not a trick question when they ask for something that doesn't exist. It just has no chance. So C, people came up to me like frustrated. <laughs> I think wasn't. No, I don't know. Might have been Bella or somebody. But they're like, this is wrong. I was like, what do you mean it's wrong? They're like, they're asking for purple. There are no purple. I was like, yeah, so what's the chance? <laughs> oh. It's that whole like moment of like, it's math, right? Like, we get it. It's it's not a trick question. It's just zero. Right? We zero is a valid number. Uh the you're definitely gonna see these on the mastery. Definitely. So please be comfortable with scaling axes. We take the total distance between the numbers, divide by the amount of gaps. Yes, Molly. Yes. 138 was a little interesting. It was a little bit tougher. So remember that the mean of 5 is the average. So when you add them up and divide by. So the work you should have been thinking through here is if I add up five numbers, divide by five, I make five. Well, what divided by five makes five? But yeah, this has to be 25. So the first time through wasn't bad. We could do like 10, 9, and then 3, 2, 0, or 10, 9, 3, 2, 1. Would work. Right, that gets our 25. But there are other ways as well. Because there's a zero there, that makes it nice and convenient. B was harder. Right, B pushes the specific question of with a median of two and a half. Really? Yeah, so our numbers have to go in order, and Lily's saying, so 2.5 has to be here. We still, sorry, my computer is confused for me. If we go in order smaller to bigger, well, we know the 10 is easy to work with, so I'm going to throw in at least the 10. Could I, I could do 9 and 1 to make another 10. But then I'm still missing another 2.5. Now there are multiple ways to do this. I could also do 10, 10, 2.5, 0. Right? Because we have 0 to work with. The main thing is 2.5 has to be the middle number when we put it in order. Now C was tough. 
who's got a who thinks their C is right and didn't look at the answer key yet? Or who or and I'm not asking this actually, but or think about who skipped C because you decided to take the lame way out and not push your brain. Lily, what'd you have? You had a so C if you don't remember, it's on your paper, but it asked largest median. Right? What's the biggest number we can put in the middle? So Lily says seven and a half would be the largest number in the middle. She is right. But it can't be the median. So there was a 10 involved, but they were asking us what five numbers can add up to 25 with the biggest number possible in the middle. I can't put a 10 there because it's going to be 10, 10, 10, and that's too many. Because the numbers have to be in order. C was a, like a challenge problem. That would be like an exemplary option Wait, on the test. And by the way, my exemplary options are not optional if you have time. So if you have time, try it. Otherwise, it's like optional. If you don't get to it, no worries. Um, but yeah, C, C was the challenge type problem. So guys, I will tell you what to anticipate for the review game yesterday. And that will tell you, like, essentially what's on the test. Um, actually, I don't want to show you the, the actual game because we don't know which questions are which questions. So I have put these questions in in random order. This is where I make all my tests. So what you should anticipate to be on the mastery slash be in the review game. I've cut these problems out of this document and put them in a random order. So I should see all eyes up on the board because I'm telling you what's on your test. Not the exact questions, but essentially. Now if you like if you want insight into how I do these things and how I plan, if I go back two screens, and actually I'll just do it from here. When I go to make these tests, my bank is broken up into what we did this chapter. And if you go back and you review what we did this chapter, this is what this chapter was focused on. Fraction decimal conversions, addition of integers and partial numbers, right? Rational numbers, anything that can be written as a fraction. General multiplication rules, right? Like if you have a positive and a negative, it makes a negative. If you have two negatives, it makes a positive. That cheat sheet is up here, right? The posters. Coordinate graphs and scaling axes. And a checkpoint always. So representations of portions. So that's what, like, those are the five topics you should expect on your test. So things like this, a visual that you have to decide. What is the fraction or decimal or percent or all of them representations of these things? How would we solve a problem like one of these? And obviously you won't have this many on your test, but... I was just putting together a bank of things I could cut from. How do we figure out what fraction or decimal or percent? Or like, if I even go ahead and tell you it's a hundred grid, Zach, you can count what squares? Count all the squares? Okay. Which I know you know what you're trying to say, but you're just not saying the one word I'm looking. You would count the array of shaded squares, right? Don't just say count the squares. Well, they're all squares. Count the shaded squares, and then that would be the portion over however many are total here, which you should double check that it's a 10 by 10. But yeah, this is 100 grid. Um, magic diamond problems, not necessarily given to you as a magic diamond. So if I just told you two numbers have a product of this and a sum of that, I would expect that you could set up the diamond Right, we, I think we talked in class, you could just make the X. So here, the diamond, quote unquote. And actually, I had students who like would set this up backwards, but still, you can still solve it. So product of 48 should go on top, but if you put it on bottom, like you just have flipped the diamond over. So things like this, where you could then set up the diamond and solve that number sense type problem. Um, being able to say what would do the same thing. So if I gave you a negative plus a negative, what down here would be the same thing? 
if I give you a bunch of work involving negatives and positives, addition and multiplication. Are you comfortable with that? When we do the I'm thinking of a number game, can you solve for that mystery number? Remember, this is just a bank I threw together. This is not your test. This is just a bunch of questions I like. Um, positive and negative addition, subtraction, some order of operations. Right, we have to do multiplications before we do additions. Uh, these diamonds disappeared somehow when I downloaded the document, but more diamond problems. Integer problems, rewriting fractions as decimals, rewriting percents as fractions or decimals. Like, all of this should be pretty anticipatable for you. Like, none of this should be a surprise because we've done it all this chapter. Any last questions? If you are ready to turn in 225, 226, and 2312 enclosure. Yeah, sorry, there are five assignments. Um, I will not have to check on them. So what we're turning in tomorrow, or right now, is 225, 226, Like, it would be a huge favor to me if you either turn those in now or before the end of the day. Okay, that, like, AO extensions would be great just so I can grade them tonight. And you guys know I'm just completion check. Right, did you engage with it? Did you write up some work? Did you do it? Um, and I do spot check certain questions. Like, did they actually put decent points on the graph? Did they actually calculate the absolute value of this? Like, so I do know that I spot check certain questions. Um, even if you get it wrong, that doesn't mean your assignment is bad. That means I might like talk to you about it. Because um, if you don't know how to do something, that's my job. And we have like one minute, and that's class. Thank you very much. You made life easy after the crazy morning that we had. What's up? Did you use one of your school? You want a bottle of water?